to my channel and welcome if you're new here. It has been a minute since I did a five nights of dinners. Since transitioning over to my clean approach to WW, so many of you have asked me, can you do a new five nights of dinners with clean, healthy recipes? So I am here today to share with you five healthy dinners on WW that are clean eating, healthy food, WW friendly, and absolutely, of course, delicious. So if you would like five new recipes to add to your arsenal, then stay tuned. dinner we are making an all crust sheet pan lasagna we are making lasagna on a sheet pan how fun is that and how easy for cleanup I'm excited for this recipe so let me show you what you're going to need for this sheet pan lasagna milk low-fat milk or fat-free milk oil of your choice I'm using avocado oil minced garlic you could even use fresh garlic Parmesan cheese crushed tomatoes you could do whole tomatoes and crush them yourself whole milk ricotta cheese eggs mozzarella cheese of your choice i always use my trader joe's i love this mozzarella cheese so much salt pepper and some poultry seasoning we're going to season our turkey breast with the poultry seasoning to make it taste a little more like sausage you'll need some fresh basil ground turkey you want definitely want to do the 99 percent so that the points stay the same on this recipe and then some oven ready lasagna so let's get started on tonight's dinner in my pan here i have half of a tablespoon of oil i'm just letting that warm up i'm going to add one pound of the 99 percent ground turkey to my pan and then we are going to season that with poultry seasoning you could also use fennel or whatever you have on hand to kind of give it that sauce vibe so I'm just gonna go ahead and add about a tablespoon and a half of the poultry seasoning and we're gonna go ahead and cook this down once the turkey is cooked completely through you're gonna go ahead and grab out a bowl we're gonna add the turkey to the bowl and then using the same pan we're gonna add another tablespoon or I'm sorry half of a tablespoon of oil so that we can cook down the tomatoes the garlics and salt and pepper so to the same pan, I added another half of a tablespoon of avocado oil and a big heaping spoonful of my minced garlic. I'm gonna let this cook down just until the garlic becomes fragrant, and then we'll add in our tomatoes. Once you add in your tomato sauce, we're going to put in some salt and some pepper, about three quarters of a teaspoon of salt and about a quarter teaspoon of pepper. And then we're going to let this simmer on medium heat until it is warm through and our sauce starts to thicken. So while our tomato sauce is simmering on the stove, we're going to mix together the lasagna filling. So in a medium to large bowl, we're gonna put the entire container of ricotta cheese. Again, this is full fat ricotta and this is a 15 ounce container so this is just the small container of ricotta there is a bigger one as well but you just want the 15 ounce container we're also going to add one quarter cup of the we're also going to add one quarter cup of low fat milk and not spill like i did and then one half of a cup of parmesan cheese we're gonna do another big pinch of salt, about three quarters of a teaspoon, and about another half to a quarter teaspoon of pepper. We're also going to add one large egg. And then we're going to do about a half of a cup of very rough chopped basil, fresh basil. If you use dried basil, you probably wanna do like an eighth of a cup of dried basil to make up for the fresh basil. And then we're going to stir this together until everything is combined. And this is going to be the filling for our sheet pan lasagna. 
All right, so we're ready to assemble the lasagna. So here is our sauce. It looks so good. It smells so good. We're gonna put about two thirds of a cup of the sauce down on the bottom of our sheet pan. And we want this just a very, very thin layer. I did two scoops here of this spoon worth of the sauce. You just wanna make sure that you coat the bottom so that the noodles and the rest of the ingredients just don't stick to the base of the sheet pan. So once you've added about two thirds cup of the sauce to the bottom of a pan, we are gonna go ahead and add some lasagna noodles. We are using 10 total, so we wanna pull out five sheets. Now these are the pre-cooked, and when these cook in the oven, they will expand. So they'll expand to kind of fill the space a little bit more. So basically we wanna put two noodles across and then three noodles long ways across our sheet pan. And again, that is going to expand and fill the pan while it cooks. My mistake, you guys, we're using 12 noodles total, six per layer. So I've got five down, I kind of just reposition them. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and break this one just so that it fills in that space. And again, these will expand as they go through the cooking process. Once your noodles are down, we're gonna go ahead and top those with all of this ricotta cheese mixture. So we're just going to take that and just spread it as even as we can. I like to hold the noodles just to make sure that they don't move. See how easily they move as you go ahead and spread out the ricotta, but we have quite a bit. You just want it as evenly spread over these noodles as possible. Once your ricotta is spread over your noodles, we're gonna top it with all of the turkey. Now this has cooled to the touch, which is exactly what you want, so that you can sprinkle this evenly over the top of the ricotta. And again, this is going to sub for sausage that the original recipe calls for. It's going to save us a ton and I mean a ton of points and calories by using the 99% turkey and just seasoning it up with poultry seasoning. You won't even know the difference, I promise. So now we're gonna add another two thirds cup or so of our sauce. And I'm just going to kind of drizzle that over the top of the meat and the ricotta. We only have one more layer, so we don't wanna not have enough sauce for that. So make sure that you kind of space your sauce out as even as you can. Last step before we do another layer is we want one half of a cup of our mozzarella cheese and we just wanna sprinkle that over the top and then we'll be ready to add the remaining six lasagna noodles, sauce, more mozzarella and Parmesan. How amazing does this look already? So we have six more noodles. We're basically going to do the same thing as we did before. So let's go ahead and lay those across, leaving a bit of a gap for them to expand in the cooking process. And then again, I'm going to break this one and add it. This is looking good. And then we're gonna pop on the rest of the sauce and that's gonna go right over the top. And you can spread that nice and even because this is the last layer of our sheet pan lasagna. So we can use up all the rest of our sauce. Then we're gonna top it with one more half of a cup of mozzarella cheese and the remaining quarter of a cup of Parmesan. Here it is, ready to go into the oven. This looks so good, you guys. We're gonna go ahead and grab a piece of foil, spray one side of it with non-stick cooking spray, put the grease side down just so everything doesn't stick to it. And we're gonna pop this in the oven at 450 degrees for about 20 minutes or so. Then we'll remove the foil and put it back in for 10 to 15 more until the cheese is bubbly and it's nice and browned on top. All right, I just pulled the sheet pan lasagna out of the oven. If I I could not be more excited literally about this dinner you guys this looks incredible decadent oh my gosh my house smells like an Italian pizzeria I am so excited so this dinner makes eight servings total so I'm gonna go ahead and cut this into eight servings I have some organic mixed veggies in the microwave as a side dish for some veggies and I'll be back to show you dinner and give you the smart points all right so here is tonight's dinner so I have one eighth of the sheet pan lasagna. I have some mixed veggies here with just some salt and pepper. So one eighth of the lasagna is nine smart points on both blue and purple and 10 smart points on the green plan and 376 calories. So lasagna for less than 400 calories is amazing. That's great smart points for lasagna. I cannot wait to dig in. For tonight's dinner, we are making a gnocchi and meatball bake. This sounds so good. Come for 
food that is clean eating and WW friendly. So let me show you what's in tonight's dinner. First you're going to need some breadcrumbs. You can use marinara or make your own like I'm going to do. I'm just going to use this organic tomato sauce from the Thrive Market and I'm just going to add some Italian seasoning. It's easy. You don't need very much for this recipe. If you're interested in Thrive, it is linked down below and you do get $20 worth of free product of your choice with a membership. Highly recommend. You guys know I love my Thrive Market. You'll need some nonstick cooking spray as well as some oil of your choice. You'll need 16 ounces of potato gnocchi. Ground beef, I'm using 93%. You could use 96 and it may lower the points a little bit. You would just have to put that into your recipe builder. A onion, yellow pepper, and green pepper, or just one large pepper. I wanted to use up the green and then this is a really small yellow, so I'm gonna cut that up as well. Mozzarella cheese, I'm just using the Trader Joe's organic mozzarella. Sliced mushrooms, an egg, and lots of seasoning. So first we have oregano. Italian, this is so I can make my own marinara. You'll also need some fennel seeds. I'm gonna use minced onion in place of finely chopped onion. That way I can save my onion for slices for the actual dish. And then I have some basil as well as some garlic powder. So let's get started on tonight's dinner. So I have the water on the stove getting to a boil for the gnocchi. I'll show you guys when I add that. And while that's coming to a boil and the gnocchi is cooking, I am going to chop. So I'm going to take my can of tomato sauce and I'm just going to mix it with some Italian seasoning for the sauce. And then I'm gonna chop my onion into slices and both my bell peppers into slices as well. Next, we're gonna make the meatballs. So in my bowl here, I have my one pound of 93% ground beef. I'm going to add one egg. I have two tablespoons of those Trader Joe's breadcrumbs and lots of seasoning. So we're gonna go ahead and add some fennel seeds. If you're not familiar with what fennel is, it kind of has a black licorice taste, but it makes a really good flavorful meatball, kind of those Italian vibes. We're also going to add in some oregano, and I'm gonna do about a teaspoon of oregano, and then we're gonna do about a teaspoon of basil, and we're just gonna make these really yummy and flavorful. And then I have minced onion. So I'm going to do about an eighth of a cup of minced onion, and then we are going to dig in with the hands and form 24 meatballs. To a skillet here, I've added about a half of a teaspoon of oil. To that, I'm gonna add our sliced up mushrooms. We're also going to add in all of the onion and the peppers, and we're going to saute these down for about seven minutes or just until they are nice and soft and cooked through. So I have my gnocchi here that I drained. Here are the veggies. We're just gonna go ahead and add them directly to the bowl with the gnocchi. We are going to use this exact same skillet, spray it with a little nonstick cooking spray, and we're gonna pop our meatballs in, and then preheat our oven to 350 degrees. So the meatballs are cooking in my bowl here. I have the gnocchi along with the vegetables. We also have the tomato sauce. I'm gonna pour about half of the tomato sauce, pasta sauce, in with the gnocchi and the veggies. We're gonna give that a good stir. And then my pan here is a nine by 13. I have it sprayed with some nonstick cooking spray. I'm going to go ahead and add the gnocchi veggie tomato sauce mixture to my pan here. Just gonna make sure we get all of that. And you can wait and mix the meatballs in with all the sauce. I'm gonna do it a little bit different. I'm actually going to put this on the bottom and then I'll top this mixture with the cooked meatballs and the rest of the tomato sauce. You can wait and just add the meatball to the same bowl, all the sauce to the same bowl, whatever your preference is. So we're gonna go ahead and spread this out nice and even in the bottom of the baking dish and then we'll add the meatballs. So 
once you've added the meatballs to the top, look how good that looks. We're gonna go ahead and just drizzle on the leftover sauce. We just wanna make sure that our meatballs have a little sauce on them as well, just so they don't dry out while cooking. We are going to cover this with some foil for the majority of the cooking process anyways. We are gonna top it with some cheese. This is going to be so good. I am excited. This is comfort food, you guys. Food the kids and husbands will love because it's meatballs and gnocchi and hides the vegetables amongst all the rest of the deliciousness. And then we have one half of a cup of mozzarella. So I'm just going to sprinkle that on top. You can also weigh this out on your food scale, which is what I did. And we want two ounces of mozzarella. So we'll put that on top. We'll get this covered with some foil for the first 20 minutes. Let it bake and then we'll remove the foil for the last 10 and get that cheese nice and melted and brown. All right, dinner is out of the oven. This smells and looks so good. Look at all the melted cheese on top. This entire pan makes eight servings. So I'm gonna go ahead and dish up one eighth and I'll be back to show you dinner, give you the smart points. I'm also going to go ahead and top it here with some of this organic parsley, just for a little flavor, make it look pretty. And I'll also share the calories with you. All right, so here is a dinner. So this is one eighth of the gnocchi meatballs. It looks so good, topped with a little bit of parsley. You could add some extra cheese if you wanted, but this is a total of six smart points per serving on all plants, which is not bad for meatballs and gnocchi. And it is a total of 227 calories per serving. So this is dinner. <music> tonight's dinner I am making turkey fried rice you could pair this with egg rolls wontons extra vegetables but I'm gonna do this it is a big serving this whole recipe only makes four servings so it's actually plenty for a dinner but of course you could pair it with whatever you would like so let me show you what's in tonight's dinner first you'll need rice vinegar poison sauce now this one has quite a bit more calories and points than a lot of the other brands it was just the only option in the store so you may be able to find a lower calorie and pointed one than this guy here some minced garlic rice you could do white you could do brown whatever your preference ginger you can do fresh ginger grated ginger or ginger like this turkey i'm doing 99 percent fat free you're also going to need some eggs carrots green onions snow peas and frozen peas so let's make some fried rice so the first thing we have started here is three quarters of a cup of dry rice with one and a half cups of water we're just going to cook the rice per package instructions so the first thing that we need to do while the rice is cooking is chop up the green onions have the snow peas and slice our carrots here into some discs So in a large skillet, I went ahead and sprayed it with some non-stick cooking spray. The first thing we're gonna do is add in that pound of ground turkey. And we're gonna start cooking the ground turkey. We're gonna add half of the scallions that we chopped up and reserve the other half for topping our dish. We're gonna throw in some ginger. I'm just gonna use some ginger powder. I love ginger, my husband does not so much, so I'm not gonna go too crazy with the ginger. And then lastly, I'm just going to put in a large scoop of minced garlic, and we're gonna let this cook until the turkey is browned. Once your turkey is nice and cooked through, we're gonna go ahead and add in the rice. So the rice turned out perfect. So we're gonna go ahead and add that in. Now you can pre-make your rice ahead of time. They always say the best rice to use in stir fry or fried rice is pre-cooked cold rice. So you can certainly cook your rice a little bit ahead of time and have it be nice and cold and cooled before adding it. But I think this is gonna work just fine. And then we're gonna go ahead and we are going to add the cut up snow peas and carrots that we chopped up. So let's give that a quick little stir here. We're gonna have a full, full skillet. And then we're gonna add in two tablespoons of the poison sauce. 
And we're also going to add in two tablespoons of rice wine vinegar. So here's that. And then we are gonna let this cook just a little bit longer until the snow peas and the carrots have begun to soften. And then I am adding two eggs as well, which was an addition to the original recipe. It didn't call for eggs, but what's fried rice without eggs? So I am going to pop in a couple of eggs once this cooks down. I'm also going to add some coconut aminos just because I like the salty sweet combination. This is again in addition to the original recipe. Of course you can use soy sauce as well. So this just needs about two more minutes to warm through and then we'll scramble up the eggs. So we're gonna go ahead and move everything over just kind of off to the side, give ourselves a little bit of room here. And I have two cracked eggs. So we're just gonna put those right in alongside the rice scramble those up and then we'll stir everything together once the eggs are thoroughly cooked. All right, it's done. Look at this big pan. You guys, this looks amazing. It makes four servings, so it's one fourth of this pan. I'm gonna go ahead and get this into a bowl and I'll be back to share smart points and calories. All right, and here is a dinner. So this is a huge bowl. It's about halfway full with one fourth of the recipe. That is going to be four smart points on both blue and purple. If you opted for zero point rice on purple, you could knock it down to one point, which is amazing. And then it is five points on green just because you do have to count for the ground turkey. And I'll put the calories here on the screen for you guys with the point. So this is dinner. It looks delicious, filling. I can't wait to dig in. For tonight's dinner, I am making pizza pasta salad. I'm gonna pair this with some of the new chick on the block chicken. I'll show that to you guys. This is such a great lunch, dinner, snack. You can take this to a barbecue. Super family friendly, super easy and great on the smart point. So let me show you what's in tonight's dinner. First you're going to need pasta. I'm gonna be using two bags of the Fiber Gourmet Light Spaghetti. They just reformulated all of their pasta and now it is even better than it was before. It tastes amazing. It is better than regular pasta and now that they've reformulated it it is only two points for two ounces traditional pasta is five to six smart points for two ounces fiber gourmet nailed it with only two points and 100 calories for two ounces of pasta you guys that's a lot of pasta highly recommend fiber gourmet they have a spaghetti or linguine style of noodle you can kind of see it looks just like spaghetti they have rotini, penne, and elbows. Highly recommend. You can buy this off of the Net Nutrition website. I'll link it down below for you guys. Get the Fiber Gourmet. It is the only pasta we ever use in our house. My husband doesn't want anything else. He truly, truly loves this pasta. So I'm gonna be using two bags of that. I am using the Kraft Zesty Italian Light Dressing. We'll need three tomatoes, so I have four here. We'll use three of those. You're going to need some Parmesan cheese, turkey pepperoni, basil so i just have some of the organic basil from trader joe's and then some light cheese and again from trader joe's the light shredded cheese so i'm going to go ahead and chop up some basil tomatoes and i'm going to slice my pepperonis in half for the salad we're going to do three ounces of pepperoni all three tomatoes and a good handful of basil So our pasta is going. I'm gonna cook one bag at a time. We'll strain it, rinse it with some cold water so that it gets nice and cold, and we'll finish putting together the salad. So I went ahead and added both bags of cooked pasta to my bowl. I did rinse them in cold water so that they would not be hot. We're gonna add everything into one bowl, starting with what we chopped up, tomatoes, basil, pepperoni. So make sure you get all of the good stuff out of the bottom of that bowl. And then we're going to add one half of a cup of that Kraft light zesty Italian dressing, one half of a cup of Parmesan cheese, and then one cup of light shredded cheese. And all we're gonna do guys is give this a stir 
and we have pasta salad. So it's best if you put it in your refrigerator for about an hour, that just gives it a chance to get a little bit more cold, but you just wanna make sure everything gets mixed really well. So you have pepperoni, basil, tomato and cheese in all the bites. So I'll be back here shortly. Well, a second for you guys. I'm gonna throw this in the refrigerator for a little bit while I make up my chicken, and then I'll be back to show you dinner. We'll go over the points here of the pizza pasta salad, and I'll show you exactly what I'm gonna have for dinner. All right, guys, so here is my dinner. This looks amazing. So the salad makes 10 servings total. So this is one serving. That is a lot. And then I do have my new chick on the block nugget here. I thought I had more than one. I only had one. I'll show you guys the bag of what that looks like. But let's go over the points here for the pizza pasta salad. So one tenth is six points on all plans. If you did use a zero point pasta on purple, you can knock that down to four points on the purple plan. But it's only six points for all of this pizza pasta salad and it is 171 calories per serving so let me show you the bag of these new chick on the block if you hadn't seen that yet but this is my dinner this little chicken is one point so this is seven points for me so this is the chicken cauliflower new chick on the block this is the original i like the spicy ish i show that a lot on salads you can pick this up normally in the freezer section in the health food area of your store sometimes it is in the actual chicken section but I always seem to find it where the healthier options are. So good. One point per little wedge of chicken. It's breaded. It's so good. So that's the chicken that I had for tonight's dinner. Tonight's dinner, I'm going to be making beef taco pie. So this is a healthy spin on taco pie, Mexican vibe. So let me show you what's in tonight's dinner. First, you'll need some diced tomatoes one pound of 90 or 93 percent lean ground beef chili powder fresh or dried cilantro cumin a bell pepper onion some type of tortilla preferably one smart point per tortilla i'm going to use these very small la tortilla factory these are really good and then lastly you'll need some light shredded cheese so let's make some dinner so the first thing we're gonna do is add our pound of ground beef to a skillet on the stove. I went ahead and chopped up both my bell pepper and my onion. So once I break apart the meat here, I'll add in the pepper and the onion, and we'll let this cook until the ground beef is browned. Once the ground beef is cooked through, you've drained off the fat. We're gonna go ahead and add in some chili powder. Now you guys know we don't like our food super spicy, so I'm not gonna go too crazy with the chili powder. And then we're also going to add in just a dash of cinnamon as well. I know that sounds weird, but it's going to add some really good flavor. And then I have my can of diced tomatoes. I'm gonna put in half of those and reserve the other half for the bottom of the baking dish. All right, so we're ready to start assembling. So you're gonna go ahead and grab out a pie dish. You could use tin, glass, whatever your preference. Go ahead and spray it with some nonstick cooking spray and make sure you get it pretty well just so that the taco pieces don't stick. To the bottom of the pan, we're gonna go ahead and add half the can of diced tomatoes. We added half to the meat mixture and we reserved the other half for the bottom of the pan. So we'll add those. And then I'm just gonna use my spoon here and kind of spread those out on the bottom. And then we are going to take four of our six tortillas and layer those on the bottom of the baking dish. Go ahead and overlap them if necessary to make sure that you completely cover the bottom of the pie dish. And then of course, reserve the other two for use later. So there's that. Next, we're going to take our yummy mixture. Look at how good this looks. It smells amazing. And we're gonna go ahead and just layer that right on top of those tortillas and that layer of the diced tomatoes. Make sure that you use a big enough pie plate because this is quite a bit of filling and we still have to add the other couple tortillas and the cheese to the top here. So go ahead and spread that out. Push it down into place so that essentially it's going to form a pie and that way it'll all hold together during cooking. We're then going to take the remaining two tortillas and we're just going to cut these into strips and lay these on top of the pie here and then top it with one cup of cheddar. Oh, I'm sorry, four ounces. So about a half of a cup of the light shredded cheese. I... 
And here is the beef taco pie ready to go into the oven. It's going to go in uncovered at 400 degrees for 20 to 25 minutes. So the beef taco pies out of the oven, you guys, look at this. It looks amazing. Those layers of goodness. So I'm gonna let this rest for just a couple of minutes. This recipe serves six. So I'll be back once I cut everything up and share the smart points and the calories. All right, so here's dinner. This looks absolutely delicious. Look at those layers, tortilla and burger. I'm so excited. So this is five smart points on all plans per serving using a one smart point tortilla. Now, if you opt for a higher point tortilla, you wanna definitely recalculate your points. And then I have two tablespoons of my, flip it around here, there we go, of the Good Culture Sour Cream. That's an additional three points for me. So this is an eight smart point dinner. It looks so good. Thank you so much for joining me on another five nights of dinner. It was so fun putting together five clean, healthy, WW friendly recipes for you guys. I am going to put all five of these on my website. My website is down in the description box below. So all you have to do is click on the little drop down arrow and you'll see everything in my description box. You're also going to find the link to head over and join my Facebook group. We would love it if you'd head over and be part of our community over there. We have a great challenge going on right now. It's a very supportive, warm and inviting group to be in. So we'd love it if you join us over there as well. Also in the description box are discount codes and links to some of the products that I shared with you today, as well as all of the things that I can save you a little bit of money on that have become mine and your favorite things. Also, if you're new, I'd love for you to stick around and subscribe. I do have a five nights of dinner playlist, so definitely check that out so that you can walk away with dozens of recipes. All you have to do to subscribe is just hit that little subscribe button and the bell next to it so you're notified when new videos are uploaded. If you love five nights of dinners with the clean approach, give this video a big thumbs up. I really appreciate it and it really helps out my channel. So thank you so much in advance. Thank you guys for watching. And of course, I'll see you all in the next one. Bye guys. <laughs>